This is the Cessna 182 Turbo Skylane, the turbocharged version of the legendary 182 Skylane single-engine piston plane that has been in production since 1956. The Wichita company says it updated the venerable four-seater with the latest Garmin G1000 NXI avionics suite, new interiors, an in-cabin oxygen system, and a heated propeller. Power comes from a Lycoming TIO 540 engine with a Hartzell Engine Technologies turbocharger that generates 235 horsepower up to 20,000 feet. Here is everything you need to know about the Cessna 182 Turbo Skylane. Starting with the cabin, the high wing design not only offers excellent visibility, but also makes it easy to get in and out of the aircraft. One of the first things you notice about the 182 is its impressive interior. The cabin is wider than that of the Cessna 172 and closer to the spaciousness of the Cessna 206, providing ample shoulder room for both the pilot and passengers. Two noteworthy features are the air conditioning and the built-in oxygen systems, which make it suitable for flying in various climates and weather conditions. The cabin is comfy enough for a longer flight and seats four total passengers, including the pilots. You've got a two-door entry so you don't have to climb around, and space for luggage behind the passenger seats in addition to the external baggage hatch with a total space of 32 cubic feet or 910 liters and a total weight of 200 pounds or 91 kilograms. The wraparound windshield is big, but you might need to find a nice cushion to sit on to elevate your view forward since the panel is set pretty high, especially for shorter pilots. The side windows are low and can require a bit of a hunch down to see through due to the high wing design. Skylanes also have a steep rear window, which gives it an even sleeker look and provides some additional viewing opportunities for back seat passengers. The seats are large, comfortable, and strong, reminiscent of something you'd find in the back of a business jet. Unlike four-point systems on many new airplanes, the seat belts on the Turbo Skylane are automotive shoulder belts with AMSAFE built-in airbags. The belts retract into the roof behind and between the seats. Even after hours of flying, you don't get that fatigued, strapped-in feeling you can get with four-place belt systems. Now let's talk about the avionics suite. The Turbo Skylane is integrated with Garmin G1000 NXI avionics for a really up-to-date graphical interface. The glass cockpit can be intimidating for someone more accustomed to a six-pack, but once you adjust, it is truly luxurious. The hardware is stronger than previous Garmin avionics and has additional features that improve situational awareness for pilots during flight. Initially, it can be easy to get lost in the new age of digital readings, so pilots that are unfamiliar may want to take some time to get to know the cockpit before takeoff. This advanced system provides a wealth of information at the pilot's fingertips. The G1000 NXI integrates all primary flight, navigation, communication, terrain, traffic, weather, and engine sensor data on two 10.4-inch high-resolution displays. The Turbo Skylane is also outfitted with three of the most noteworthy improvements to come down the pike in a long time. Garmin's Synthetic Vision Technology, Garmin's excellent GFC 700 Autopilot, and Double Ass. The upgrades that came with the launch of the 182 Turbo Skylane in 2004 are all there, too. They include several small aerodynamic improvements, more streamlined VOR antennas, slicker wheel pants, a smaller beacon, that Cessna added in order to boost the cruise speed of the airplane by five knots or so, which does in fact seem to be the case. Now let's talk about the engine, performance specs, and how it flies. The high-performance reputation of Turbo Skylanes is no joke. They're powered by a 235-horsepower Lycoming TIO 540AK1A engine and a three-blade Macaulay metal, constant speed, heated propeller. This aircraft offers a max range of 971 nautical miles, or 1,800 kilometers, about the distance from central Illinois to New York. Its speed tops out at 175 knots, though cruise speeds fall quite a bit lower at 165 knots. With its 87-gallon or 330-liter fuel tank, you can easily fly six to seven hours from a single takeoff. Max climb is 1,040 feet or 317 meters per minute, which outdoes a Cessna 172 by more than 300 feet or 100 meters. The takeoff distance at sea level on a standard day is around 1,385 feet or 422 meters, 
and its flight ceiling is 20,000 feet or 6,100 meters, making it a high flyer in comparison to most of its competition. They have decent landing control, except for their tendency for nose drag, which can put the firewall at risk. Sky lanes are notorious for this issue, which has spanned its entire lifetime, impacting every model that has come into production. But still, Cessnas in general are aerodynamically designed to minimize slip, and the 182 takes that to another level with its power and weight. Still, you'll want to do plenty of trimming up to and during landing, flares to avoid slamming the nose gear to the landing strip. The fixed tricycle landing gear has had room for improvement over the years, and one improvement that has lasted well with many Cessnas is a rugged design that provides more tolerance for soft field runways. This was more of a necessity than anything, given the frequency of expensive firewall repairs after banging the nose to the pavement. Although this problem has persisted throughout the production life of the 182, Cessna has yet to fully eliminate the need for extra caution. However, adjustments made to the landing gear over time, as well as reputational awareness among pilots, have contributed to the gains made by Cessna in this regard. Cessnas are known for their stability, and the Turbo Skylane is no exception. They cruise comfortably and quickly with a maximum cruise speed of 165 knots. They aren't the fastest plane on the market, but they certainly aren't the slowest. It's notably difficult, as with all of Cessna's high-wing designs, to put this aircraft into a spin. And although it may try to overbank on a turn, it's nothing your average or even training pilot shouldn't be able to handle. The three-blade constant speed prop uses a variable pitch to maintain its speed with different levels of power, providing better cruise performance. So, while you still have throttle control, you also have a prop lever that allows you to change the pitch of your propeller to adjust your RPM for consistent and ideal performance throughout the flight. Another benefit of a constant speed propeller is that if your engine fails, you can pull the prop lever back to reduce pitch and feather the propeller, which will reduce drag. This gives you more glide time to get yourself and your plane to safety. Overall, handling is forgiving enough to make up for the nose-heavy shortcomings. The ease of its cruise is a gift for pilots that just want to get in the air and enjoy the scenery below them and out front. And finally, the landing distance is 1,350 feet or 411 meters, and the full fuel payload is 476 pounds or 216 kilograms. The base purchase price for a new Cessna 182 Turbo Skylane is $650,000 before options, but maintenance is typically more affordable and can offset some of the purchase cost when compared to similar aircraft. Since it's a smaller plane, you can rent a hangar for a relatively low price and a Turbo Skylane in good shape and being flown properly isn't likely to need a lot of frequent repairs. They're durable and reliable often going two or more annuals without any issues. While the total fixed cost is roughly $60,000 to $100,000 per year, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $200 to $300. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.